Hey everyone, today we're making salsa verde chicken enchiladas and we're gonna top these with a little bit of fresh mango just to kind of add a little something extra to it, which I think you're gonna like. I'm also gonna ask you today to follow along with me and watch the video and then let me know at the end in the comments what I did, what are the three things that I did to really enhance the flavor of this recipe? What are the things that I did that are really key that are gonna make this recipe taste so much better than if you didn't do them? All right, so I'm Rockin' Robin and I'm gonna show you how to make it right after this. All right, it's time to go over our ingredients. First up, we have a chicken breast here. There's a nice, uh, nice large one there. Make a few enchiladas with that. I have some tomatillos. Now, tomatillos, uh, you can find these in your grocery section where you see the peppers. And tomatillos come with this little kind of paper wrapping around them. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove that and then it's gonna, you're gonna find a sticky residue on there and we're gonna rinse that off before we uh, proceed to cook them. We'll need an onion, I got a half of a yellow onion here, a poblano pepper, you can use a jalapeno if you like, you can use whatever you like. I have some garlic, I have several cloves here and now I want you to notice that with the garlic I've left all the paper on it. And the reason I did that is because when I cook it in the oven, when I broil it, I want it to not burn, so the paper will help keep it from burning. I've got some freshly cut up mango here. Now you can buy that already cut up at the store. I'm using little pieces here, or you can cut it up yourself, and I have a video for you. I'll leave a, a link for that down below in the description so that you can find that if you need it. We'll need some shredded cheese. I got some Monterey Jack here. Now, my thing with shredded cheese is I don't buy it already shredded or grated. I like to do my own because the shredded one, if you read the package ingredients, like, you know, like I always like to tell you to do, you'll see that there are, you know, mold inhibitors in your cheese as well as um, anti-caking ingredients. And I personally would just rather have the cheese. So that's why I grate my own. It only takes two minutes to do. We'll need some sour cream and some cilantro. Now, if you don't like cilantro, go ahead and sub in some parsley. We'll also need some salt and some olive oil. All right, the first thing we wanna do, this is flavor tip number one. The first thing you wanna do is take all of your tomatillos and place them onto a baking sheet because we're going to be roasting these and that's what's gonna bring out some really good flavor. You could just toss all these into your food processor and that would be fine. It just wouldn't be as good as what we're doing. All right, so we're gonna put our tomatillos down. We've got our pepper. Everything's been rinsed and washed up. And then we got our garlic with the, sh the paper still on it. Remember, we're protecting it so that it doesn't burn and it just roasts nicely in there. It comes out perfect and it adds some really good flavor. So we'll just lay those right on the tray. Now with the onion, the onions tends to be a little bit dry, so it needs a little bit of fat and it's the only thing on this tray that I'm going to put a little bit of oil on. And then it just doesn't, uh, it doesn't dry out. So we'll just rub a little bit of that in. And this is gonna go in, like I said, in the broiler. You gotta watch it really close because it can burn on you. We want these tomatillos and the pepper to blister and char and you know it just brings out the flavors. And with the pepper, we're going to also take it out when it's done and we're gonna you know, cover it with plastic let it steam for just a little bit and then we're gonna take a paper towel and we're gonna wipe the blistered part off. You're still gonna get some charring in there but we're gonna take that outer coating off and underneath what you have left is a nice soft pepper. Okay, so in the oven, this goes. Now remember, we got it under the broiler and I've got my rack down, let's see, I got my rack down about two levels so it's not right up against the heat. Here's our tomatillos after about five minutes. Now you can see some of them are getting a little bit brown right here, you see that? This one not so much, probably because it's not under the heating element as well as I'd like it to be. So when they start to, to brown up like that, we're gonna wanna flip them over you know, to the other side. That one could go a little longer. We're gonna do that with all, everything, so we get it browned everywhere, right? We'll even turn over the garlic when that gets you know, going pretty brown. And our pepper back here, hopefully you can see it, it still hasn't charred up enough, so we're gonna let that go a little bit longer but keep an eye on it. All right, so some of these things are getting more done than others, like the pepper. The pepper is pretty much charred everywhere now, so I'm gonna take it out, put it in this bowl, and I'm gonna cover it with saran wrap. Some of the tomatillos, like this one here, I want it to char more, so I'm gonna leave it in. Total, so far, I've been in here about uh, 15 minutes. Those that have the nice char, we can take them off. Charring is flavor, that's why we're doing this. 
So here's our roasted veggies after about 18 minutes or so. I noticed that the larger tomatillo took longer to char up. And what I ended up doing was raising the rack closer to the element, the heating element. But this is what you're looking for, that nice charring going on. Now we're gonna let these cool almost, you know, completely. We're gonna cook the chicken now and uh, because I don't wanna put this in the food processor when it's hot. This is your flavor tip number two. Do this little deal with the, with the garlic because you want to roast it. It's just so good. It really enhances all the flavor. When you roast garlic, you can use a lot more of it because the flavors are so mellow. Keep that in mind. I could have used more, but that's okay. This is going to be good. Then once I'm done with this, I will move into cooking the chicken. Now I'm heating up a cast iron pan over here to cook our chicken. Now what I did with the chicken was I took that chicken breast and I placed it in the freezer. This is a little tip for you. Uh, for about five, 10 minutes max. It firms it up and then I was able to cut it, butterfly it, so that it would cook up quicker. So I'm gonna go ahead and rub a little bit of olive oil on this. And then I'm gonna season it with a little bit of salt. Then we're just going to let that cook. We don't want to touch it, just let it cook for a bit. Now you see how the whites come up the edges here on both of these, actually. I'm going to flip this one over. It didn't stick at all. A nice searing going on there. While the chicken is cooking, I'm going to start heating up my oil. This is flavor tip number three. To make enchiladas, the best way to make them with the most flavor is to cook them in some hot oil before you roll them and fill them. So I'm going to pour olive oil in here. I don't typically use olive oil for this. I usually would want to use avocado oil, but I am out. And we don't need too much because I'm only going to be making a few enchiladas. Anything that you have left over in terms of oil, you want to save if you can. I mean, you might as well save it. No sense throwing good oil out. You're going to save it and use it in your refried beans, okay? And so I have a video on how to make refried beans, and uh, you might want to check that out. I'll leave a, a link for you in the description. Check for doneness by using an instant read thermometer. They are a cook's best friend. That way you'll never overcook your chicken or any other kind of meat. And you're looking for a temperature of 165 degrees Fahrenheit. But yeah, I'll leave a link for you in the description of this video and you can, you can pick yourself up one of these things. They're very inexpensive and they make life, cooking life, so nice. All right, our chicken is done. I'm going to set it. I got a clean plate right back here. I'm going to just place those back there until they cool a little bit so that I can shred them. And then we'll be able to put our enchiladas together. So place all your ingredients for your salsa verde into a food processor. That's our garlic that we peeled, our tomatillos, onions, and the pepper. Here goes the cilantro. If you don't like cilantro, remember you can use parsley if you like. And something I forgot to mention earlier, it's a little fresh lime juice. So I'm gonna squeeze some of that in there. We'll add a little bit of salt and we're ready to blend. Check this out, doesn't this look delicious? All right, we're gonna pour this right into our saucepan here. Now you could serve this up and leave it just like this if you don't wanna add the sour cream. You don't have to, it's optional. Just know that it's gonna be a bit tangier and stronger in flavor and heat-wise as well because the, the um, Sour cream tends to just tone everything down a little bit and make it creamy. So that's up to you. Okay, we're going to heat up our sauce, get it nice and hot before we assemble our enchiladas. Taste your sauce. I tasted mine. This one, this batch is not very spicy hot at all. And that always depends on how, you know, how spicy your peppers are. This has a beautiful, sweet, bright, tangy flavor to it. So I'm not going to add too much sour cream to this. I like the flavors, so this kind of mutes them a bit, so I'm not going to do too much. Maybe that much. And I'll mix this in just to give it a little bit of creaminess, and again, you can leave it out totally. It just depends on what you want to do. Play with the sour cream. 
Now I'm going to take some of my warmed up sauce here, not a lot, because I want to save most of it for the top, and I'm going to place it in the chicken, okay, right on top, just to give it a little flavor and to moisten it up a little bit. Most of it I want to save for the top. All right, so here's the setup. I got my sauce over here. This is the dish that I'm going to be baking my enchiladas in. I'll be making four, maybe, enchiladas for this dish. Uh, over here, I've got my pan of oil. That's uh, olive oil. And we're going to cook up. This is for flavor tip number three. You've got to do this when you make enchiladas. If you're going to go to the trouble of making enchiladas, make them the good way. <laughs> and that is by dipping your corn tortillas into the hot oil for just a couple of seconds. Make sure your oil is hot. You can test it. That tortilla should bubble up right off the bat. I'm going to turn it up just a smidgen because once I start cooking these, they're going to, the, it's going to drop the temperature of the oil. And I'm just going to lay that in there. It's got to bubble up. You don't want it to get hard, right? Because then it, it'll be hard to roll. Let it drain. And then I'm going to place it right in the bottom. I'm going to do a couple of them here at, at a time. Flip it over. Be really careful. The oil is hot and it will burn. All right. I'm going to take it out, let it drain, and lay it flat in there. Now you let that cool for just a second because you're going to be touching it. And we're going to take some of our chicken and we're going to lay it in the center of the tortilla. Okay, that's nicely filled. I'm going to grab the end, still a little hot. I'm going to roll it over and tuck it in, okay? Add some sauce to the top. That's why we want to save some, because we want to make sure that these get covered. Then we finish it up with some cheese. I have Monterey Jack here. And then I've got the oven preheated to 350 degrees. I'll leave it in there for probably, I don't know, 15 minutes until you start seeing the cheese melt really nicely and the little bubbles going on. So, in the oven we go. All right, these are hot out of the oven, nice and bubbly. You wanna make sure that cheese is all melted all the way around. And now it's time to add a little bit of the mango. That's, it's going to be a nice little addition, something you don't normally expect, but it goes really well with this dish. So I'm going to try and, heck, I'm just going to use my hands. It works so much better. So you just drop a few of these on there, and then you get some in every bite. I made a separate dish just for me, an individual one here. All right, I'm going to dig in. is absolutely delicious. The sauce obviously makes it. It's a little bit tangy. It's got that brightness from the lime juice. It's, um, it's got a little creaminess to it as well. It is delicious. I like the addition of the mango. Kind of brightens it up again as well. A little bit of sweetness. Really nice, guys. Goes along with the heat. Delicious. Hope you guys try it. So did you get all three flavor tips for this recipe? Leave them down below in the comments for me, all right? Now, number one is what? Roast your vegetables. Number two is make sure you roast the garlic. A lot of people just throw it in raw. Roast it in the oven with the vegetables and leave the skins on. That way that garlic will just roast up and it won't burn. And number three is always, whenever you're cooking enchiladas, dip your tortillas into that hot oil before you fill them and roll them up, okay? That's what we used to do in our restaurant. They make the best enchiladas ever. So thanks so much for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know if you have any recipe requests and uh, give me a like, comments, and you know if you know any Mexican food lovers, share it with them. I, I'm sure they'll love it. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.